All right, another quick video here, and it's about grouping. There are now two types of grouping options in Tinkercad, bundle groups and union groups. And I'm just going to get this set up here. But by the way, I just want to say that it is fantastic that the people of Tinkercad and Autodesk are continuing to update this web-based application. I think it's awesome. Okay, so here is my set of shapes. I've got a cylinder, I've got a box, and I have got a cylinder that is toggled to be a hole. And I'm just going to make a duplicate of these objects. So there they are. Let the comparison start, shall we? Take a look at union group first. So it looks like the union grouping option shown up here is basically what the group option was before this update. And in fact, it even shares the same keyboard shortcut of Control-G or Command-G. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with this option, if you select a group of shapes, and that includes holes as well, and then you go on to select Union Group or Control-G, you now merge those shapes into one shape. And you can see here that we now have this grouped object here where the hole now is shown as this punched in hole here through these objects. And this now behaves as one object, meaning that I can reposition it, I can resize it, and it just resizes as one object now. Rotate it, there you go. So next, let's look at the bundle group option. So let's select these objects here. And the icon that we're using for the bundle group option is up here. And it has a keyboard shortcut of Control-B or Command-B. And if I select it, it also groups these objects together. But you can still clearly see that this group is made up of those individual elements. But it does behave like one object here because I can resize it, reposition it, rotate it, and it just behaves as one object. So really very similar to what we saw with the union group. Another feature is that this bundled group is also outlined in this really faint green outline. Seeing all the different shapes, holes included, that make up this bundled group, I believe is what Tinkercad meant by this transparency in the bundle groups. The other benefit that they say with the bundle group is that it takes less time for this grouping to take place, as opposed to the union group, where it has to render the different shapes together and give you this final look. Now, if you're using very simple shapes, kind of like me. I don't notice a lot of lag, but I have seen people online playing with this feature and it is quite a big difference between the time it takes to group things using bundle versus union. Tinkercad also mentions that the use of the bundle groups also improves the simulation results in SimLab. Now, if you want to ungroup these groupings, simply select it and click the ungroup button there. Now this ungroup button, Control Shift G or Control Command G, works for either the bundle group or the union group. Also, if you use this feature where you double click on your groupings to temporarily toggle it to an ungrouped mode, it does work for both the bundle as well as the union. So the other thing to mention is that with these groups selected, so let's select the bundled group here. On the side menu, you do have the option there to toggle between the two types of groups. Right now it is set to bundle group, but I can quickly toggle it over to union group. And you can see now it takes on a very similar appearance here. Interestingly, the colors though have been preserved. And I can toggle it back. Same thing on the union grouped object, I can toggle that to a bundle group. And of course, back to a union group. This last section is about the whole shapes in our groups. 
when you click on a bundled object that has holes in it, again, those hole shapes are preserved. So when you look at the measurements, those measurements are also including the hole shape here. So you can see that the measurements for the bundle group along the y axis is 51 millimeters. Here, along the y axis, it's 34. And of course, that makes sense because here you don't see this preserved hole shape. It's just already merged into the overall shape. Here, the hole is preserved, so it's included in that measurement. And that's also going to be reflected if you use something like ruler. It's also going to factor in that hole shape. So it's important to be aware of that because tools like the alignment tool could be potentially impacted by bundled shapes that have these hole shapes preserved in it because it is still recognized as being part of that overall shape. Another thing I want to show you here is about moving these objects into a slicer with the intent that you're going to 3D print them because there are some important differences here between the bundled group versus the union group. So I'm going to select both of these objects and I'm going to export them out and I'm going to put them into my slicer. All right, I'm in Cura right now and I've just imported those objects. On the left is the bundled group, on the right is the union group and take a look what happened with the bundled group. Notice that the hole in the bundle group does not appear in this sliced file and would not be present in the actual 3D print of this object. Interesting, and it's something to keep in mind if you are going to work with bundled groups. And this brought me to my next question. What about the walls of these shapes in this bundled group? Are they preserved inside of this object? Meaning that if we were to look inside of this object here, would we still see the walls inside of this bundled group object? So here, no, it's not. If we take a closer look here, the two shapes are basically merged here. There's no wall inside of here showing the, the original box and cylinder. All right, let's go back to Tinkercad. All right, one last thing here that I discovered as I was playing around with toggling between bundles and unions. Let's say I selected both. And let's say I want to make them both a union group. Now notice it doesn't show the option down here in the right, but I still have the option up here in the upper menu to bundle them as a union group. And when I do that, notice what happens here. I lose that hole. However, now that they're grouped together as a union group, I can now toggle them back to a bundle group. And when I toggle it back here, the hole reappears. So it is very possible that I am not using these grouping tools as intended by the folks at Autodesk. And I acknowledge that. But for me, if I'm going to use the bundle group option here as a way to create objects with holes in it with the intent that I'm going to 3D print it, I'm going to need to be really careful with that because I could inadvertently lose some of the holes inside of my objects here. All right, so that is my first attempt at exploring these two groupings. But in either case, I hope that helped. And until next time, take care. We'll see you later.